So this is part two of the annuity series. So we have already taken a look at in part one the definition of an annuity, how to calculate present and future values of annuity and we looked at what we do when we've got an annuity that's been deferred. So in this part we'll be taking a look at perpetual annuities and what we call an annuity due and then in part three we'll be looking at how to calculate equivalent annuities and how to use annuities in order to compare projects. So firstly we're going to take a look at perpetual annuities. So a perpetual annuity is simply an annuity that continues forever. So there's two types here which is annuities that stay the same forever. So if we've got $100 starting now and continuing forever, or if we've, and that's calculated as A on R, so A being your annuity value, so $100 in this case, and R being your interest rate, so 10% per annum. And remembering R must be in the same time unit as when your cash flows. So if your cash flows is $100 every year forever, R would have to be in a per annum compounded annual rate. And then you've got annuities which grow at a constant rate but continue forever. So if we've got $100 forever but growing at a rate of 10% per annum, so we'd have $100 in year one, and then you'd have $110 in year two, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we've got a formula which is A over R minus G. So A is your annuity as always, so $100. R is your interest rate in the same time period as your cash flows. So if it's $100 per year, it'd have to be 10% per year compounded annually. And G is going to be your growth rate. Now, same as R, G would have to be in the same time period as what your cash flow is. So if your cash flow is every month, your growth rate would have to be a growth rate compounded monthly per month. So it has to be consistent with R. Now, if these cash flows don't start in year one, so if it's annuities starting in year three but continuing forever that's now a deferred annuity and I would say method two would be the most simplest form of that so when you've got a perpetual annuity I would say use method two now remembering method two is the one that we split it up and why I say that this is the most simple is because you can easily have an annuity continuing forever here and starting in year one so that's simply the a on r or a on r minus g and then you just minus the two years or three years or however many periods it's been deferred by so just remember method two is probably your most simplest when you've got a deferred when you've got a perpetual annuity that's been deferred so an important thing to remember with the annuity formula is that it assumes that the cash flow occurs at the end of each period. So the first cash flow occurs at the end of year one and end of year two, etc. So an annuity due is simply that when an annuity or when the cash flow occurs at the start of the period rather than the end of the period. Now this is quite a simple concept if you just think about it. So if these occur at the start of each period, it's like saying if we shift them all up. So if a cash flow occurs at the start of period one, it's essentially the same as it occurring at the end of year zero and the same as period two if it occurs at the start of period two it's the same as it occurring at the end of year one so what we can do is then just shift this forward now conceptually this makes sense 
and how we apply it to the formula is that now whereas here we had eight cash flows we still have eight cash flows but one is essentially occurring at present time so we've got an annuity of seven cash flows here with one already at present value so putting that into a formula sense we've got if we block this out it's as though we have just an annuity of seven periods plus the cash flow that is occurring at year zero so it's already at present worth we don't have to present value it as such but this we do so if something occurs at the start of each period it's as though we're just shifting all the cash flows forward so if it's a deferred annuity you'd simply just be better off to draw out the diagram and shift it forward because you wouldn't necessarily have this one present value because if this was to start in period two it would have just shifted forward one and we would have just had that and therefore that would be our answer so it's more a conceptual problem where we've just got to think about what is actually happening to the cash flows and think about it as simply just shifting that diagram forward one period so in a simple case we're going to have a cash flow in year zero already so we're going to have one present worth and then annuity but in a deferred case we're not going to have this so just have a little think about it draw out a diagram and think it through we'll be doing some examples at the end of the annuity series we'll have a whole topic on examples so refer to that for worked examples of this case so that's it for this session. In the next session, we'll be taking out equivalent annuities and also how to use annuities to compare a project.